Well, here we are at uh, just after 11 in the morning on a Monday. Um, I have to go to work in about seven hours. But um, I am going to try a whiskey today. This here is the Glendronic 12. Uh, yeah, I have never tried a Glendronic in my life. This is the first time, and what has been chasing me away was the fact that it's aged exclusively in sherry casks. And uh, this is what the bottle looks like, the Glendronic 12. Now there's a lot of small print on the um, on the bottle and on the tube, so this is why I got my reading glasses on and can't see a damn thing. Uh, matured in a combination of the finest Pedro Jimenez and Olorosa sherry casks, the Glendronic is a perfectly balanced, smooth, creamy, full-bodied single malt Scotch whiskey. The Glendronic Distillery in the Forbes Valley in Aberdeenshire is named after the source of its water, the Dronic Burn. The process used to create the Glendronic have remained largely unchanged. Today's malt is created using great Oregon pine washbacks and the same shaped stills used in 1826. And it says the same thing in French. And on this side, uh, I think I've... Oh, it's a bunch of other small writing here. And it's in script too, so it's a little hard to... Founded in 1826 by James Allardyce. Somebody else was one of the very first... Yeah. Ah. Very first licensed distillers. Allardyce was a colorful character and who also a pioneer of wood finishing and world and would have celebrated today's superb Glendronic. Okay, and the rest is in French. Finest sherry casks. Non-shell filtered, natural, natural color, that's nice. We've also got 40% 40, 40 alcohol by volume. Okay. Get rid of this. Is there anything special on the bottle here? It's nice looking. It's about James Allardyce on there. Product of Scotland. Original... And it talks about the appearance and so on. So I think it's 750 mils. Yeah, 750 mils, 43% alcohol by volume. Let's see if I can get this open. Oh, well, it looks like I can. Oh, I like it when they come apart so easily. Beautiful. All right, just pop. And here we go into the dirty glass. The last thing I drank out of here was. Chivas Regal about half an hour ago. So the glass is primed. My taste buds are somewhat primed, I guess. And here we go. This is going to be a sherry monster or a sherry bomb. Uh, yeah, I get sherry already. Dark fruits and berries. Mm hmm Along with the dark fruits and berries, I'm also getting a a caramel. Oh, this might be good. I'm getting a caramel, some vanilla, and the dark fruits. This reminds me a lot of Glenn Farkless. Glenn Farkless has a very similar nose to this. Ah, oh, you know, along with the, oh, there's toffee. 
caramel, some vanilla, and there's that fruity note. A little bit of walnut, maybe some marzip, uh, not walnut, uh, uh, what's that other one? Marzipan, uh, almonds, almonds, marzipan. Almonds, marzipan, no smoke, no pepper, no spice, just silky smoothness. Mm. This might be one that I like a lot. It certainly is complex from the first initial sniffs. And this is a 12 year old. It's got an age statement. If I haven't mentioned it yet. Oh, this has a wonderful nose. Complex. Yes. Toffee, caramel, vanilla, dark fruits, marzipan, raisins, raisins, plums. Mm. I could sniff this all day, but you know what? I'm going to taste it. Oh yeah. See, this is the way I like. I like sherry whiskeys. That it has a strong distillery characteristic to begin with, and then it's aged in sherry cask. I don't like weak, delicate whiskeys aged in sherry cask. I mean, I have a a triplewood Akintoshin, which, while not being terrible, would be better if it was just aged in a bourbon barrel. But, and the reason I know that is because I have that whiskey too. But if a whiskey has a strong distillery character, sherry doesn't do it any harm. Not in every instance, anyway. There are some sherry whiskeys that I don't like. But this one has that earthy, fruity, dark fruits, raisins, plums, figs, etc. Or some undiscernible dark fruit. And there's also that unmistakable caramel. And some vanilla, yeah, but not as much as caramel. Caramel toffee and fruits. I think I mentioned marzipan a little bit. Yeah. Mm. Delightful and complex. Coats the mouth with a fruity zest. It's like almost some orange or lemon zest in there as well. And it goes down like, oh, it goes down beautifully. Yeah, very similar to Glenn Farkless. Very similar, very nice. It's a little bit more orangey, lemony than Glenn Farkless, but yeah, there is, 
definitely know in the aftertaste there is a lemon lemon flavor, a citrus, a strong citrus flavor. So along with the dark fruits, you've got the citrus too, adding to the complexity of the caramel that you get on the nose. Mm. Mm. Oh, a most wholehearted slancha on this one. Food queen. <laughs> Food quick. Food quick. Food quick. Food quick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>